Do you want to introduce no, yourself? No, you yeah, introduce you should introduce it. yourself. So basically, right, we need to choose a command pod, all right? Is that good? Am I doing well now? Yeah, you slowed down a bit, didn't you? Yeah. We're very close to the surface, I'm throwing up. Zed! Zed! I was going the right speed. Parachute. On the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's depressing. I think we've probably done enough for the day, actually. I, th I, I think we've done well. On a lonely planet, slowly spinning its way to damnation, amid the incompetence and unpreparedness of lesser space programs, one team stands resilient against the herds, putting their lives on the line to aid those who were previously unaware of the quick save option. Yes, it's the incredible adventures of Jebediah and his crack team of Kerbinauts. They are the Blunderbirds. Saving the Kerbin race, one stranded explorer at a time. Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of The Blunderbirds. We're in a shocking turn of events. We must rescue Kerbals that I stranded here. Or technically Laura stranded here sometime last year. Wow, is it almost a year and three months ago? Uh, time flies, doesn't it? But here is Jebediah, stranded on the surface of Minmus in the command pod. Not much more to say about that really. I can't even believe I still had this save file kicking about. I just found it in one of my backup drives and I was like, ah, oh, I forgot about this. So we can just do this mission here. The reason is because, uh, I've said it before, Minmus is actually one of my favourite places to visit in the solar system because it's so forgiving. You can just design rockets kind of... There's no restrictions for designing rockets or SSTOs really because you need so such a small amount of Delta V. And I just thought, I, just, I came up with this kind of concept for an SSTO as in something that looks quite sleek and dart-like. It looks almost like a paper aeroplane to be honest actually. I really like the look of it. It doesn't really have that much Delta V so it can't really do that much, that many things in terms of a practical sense but it does have enough to get to Minmus. And in fact with, I'm sure with very little modification it could easily do the Mun and Juno as well. So consider this a prototype to the Dune 4 maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, if, for those of you wanting to kind of play along with this, you can. The craft file is in the description, so you could download it and fly along kind of to the same beats as this video. You know, re-entry hitting and all the settings are at normal, so you, know, you should be able to replicate it fine. The one thing you have to be careful of, I'm watching that temperature gauge at the front of the plane very carefully. The Mark 1 command pod, not the inline one, but the one that looks kind of like a private jet cockpit, it's very, very susceptible to uh, re-entry heating or just heating in general I suppose because we're not technically re-entering at this point. Yeah it's very very uh, weak to heating. You really want to be using the inline cockpit but I prefer the way this one looks for this kind of spacecraft so that's why I went with it. So uh, we had to kind of tilt our nose up a little bit just to keep down, keep the exposure to heating uh, to a minimum but we easily had enough fuel to get ourselves into an orbit and there's our apoapsis shooting above 75 kilometers you know well above the atmospheric line um, but yeah. Like I say, if you want to play along with this, that's fine, but if you're not too experienced flying SSTOs, I would point you in the direction of my interplanetary SSTO guide. Uh, if you just, I'm sure if you just googled Matt Lown SSTO tutorial, it'd be the first result. Um, it's just a Minmus SSTO that's actually a bit more practical than this one because it has six seats uh, as opposed to five, and it... It's just a much. It's designed to have a lot. It has a lot more delta V built into it. It's just more a lot. It's designed to be a lot more friendly to beginners, and that video is much much longer. And I do kind of walk you through every little step. If that's something you want to try out, or you're just trying to look to get better at SSTOs, or just fly SSTOs in general, then that's a video you might be interested in. That'll be in the description, regardless. As is a music video for this um, for this mission. In case you know you prefer the music videos that I make, which is fine. But that's there if you want that. Um, but yes, uh, here we are doing our burn to Minmus. I know it would have been more efficient to perhaps, perhaps do two burns at Periapsis, but whilst we, don't, whilst we don't have that much Delta V, it probably, we probably didn't have enough for the Mun, maybe. I don't remember how much this thing had in LKO now. Um, we do have more than enough for Minmus, so I thought we'll just do one burn at Periapsis. That'll be fine. Obviously, we're coming uh, coming into Minmus at um, kind of almost a polar orbit, so we're going to just do a uh, deep space manoeuvre, uh, but we're not going to be aiming for an equatorial orbit. You can see our crashed pod isn't actually along the equator, so getting it into an equatorial orbit, we're not going to be passing above the target ship, if that makes sense. You want to be at an inclination to a point where, you know, at some point we will be passing directly over the target, because especially on Minmus, where it takes very, very little... Uh, if it takes a very small amount of time to fully decelerate your horizontal velocity, it's far easier and more efficient to put yourself on an orbit where you're going to be passing over the target. 
So that's what we're doing here. Very, very small capture burn to land at Minmus, and even even less Delta V is going to be required to land. So at this point, we have 18,000, 18,000, 1,800 meters per second of Delta V remaining, so you know, more than enough for Minmus. Now I'm just going to time accelerate, just keeping an eye on the command pod, waiting till it's passing uh, underneath our orbit. We can just sort of cut through some of the footage there. And here we are. So we don't have to wait. We don't have to, you know, we can we can start burning pretty late on because it's going to cause it costs so little to slow down. It only takes about 180 meters per second to get from the surface of Minmus into a stable orbit, which goes kind of is a telling side of just how easy it is to land on and take off from. And you can see kind of, well, I keep cutting away from it, but you, I hope you can see, I hope you saw the command pod on the ground. If not, you'll see it again in a second. I'm just kind of playing around with the uh, normal, the anti-normal and retrograde marker to try and force my trajectory to encounter well to get as close as possible to the command pod obviously we don't want to directly encounter it because we'll just crash onto the top of it and with a nuclear engine spewing out radiation from the back of this thing probably not the healthiest thing for the Kerbals but then again neither is being stranded on the surface of Minmus in an Apollo capsule for a year so you know you win some you lose some don't you <coughs> So now we're kind of getting close. I'm just bleeding off all my horizontal speed to ensure that, you know, it's, it, I can accurately predict where we're going to land. It's much easier to, um, you know, do a controlled landing in a specific spot if your uh, horizontal velocity is under control, which it is now. And our, uh, it might look like we're falling quite fast because I've sped up this footage and we're in times four physics acceleration, but we're coming in very slowly. We can just drop it back down to normal speed for the touchdown itself. But yeah, just tapping X. And then just before we hit the surface... I think I was. <laughs> I started lining ourselves up to the target and realized the auto SES was still pointing retrograde, so a bit of a wobble, but we managed to save it okay. And then I just pointed myself towards the target. We have those two gigantic SAS wheels in this thing, and that, coupled with the fact that Minmus gravity is so low, we can spin it around on the surface very easily. So we can easily point there, and then we just hit the brakes, left it a little bit late, uh, quickly increased the brake acceleration, then I remembered I was still facing towards the target, so also, S also SAS. Auto SAS pulled us around, but luckily nothing broke. And there we go. So that's the first part of this mission all wrapped up. We can get Valentina, uh, who's the only uh, badass, well, you know, the orange suit Kerbals, um, left on this safe far because Jeb, Bob and Bill are all trapped in the Minmus capsule. And we can do the obligatory taking down the flag and replacing it with the Blunderbirds flag. And there it is. So before we depart, the only thing left to do is to transfer Jeb, Bob and Bill into the SSTO. Unfortunately, the only access point is the cockpit itself, so we have to load them one at a time, then transfer them to a better seating area. Um, but yeah, it's not the most interesting thing to watch, so I'll just t uh, speed up all this footage so you can see them boarding, and we can have a nice little shot of them all sitting comfortably on board the aircraft there. Beautiful. Look how happy they look to be finally uh, given a chance to return home so we can <laughs> use auto SAS to get ourselves pointing uh, prograde to our orbit the really on Minmus it doesn't matter too much which if we burn prograde or retrograde on the orbit because we have so much delta V remaining and Minmus doesn't take very much at all to get off its surface but you know for the sake of making things doing things efficiently and I guess properly in doing this in air quotes we'll do it nine pointing 90 degrees to the surface um there we go just skimming past this mountain we actually had quite a lot of clearance there it doesn't might look a little bit close but we had loads of room and there we go probably overcooked that uh takeoff burn to be honest our apoapsis is very high you only really need a height of about 10 kilometers from minmus really if that i like to say 10 kilometers because minmus does have some pretty tall mountains so it's good to just slightly overestimate how high you want to be but i think at 23,000 meters we're definitely in the clear so just a very small burn, very small burn to get ourselves circularized. Just a couple of seconds with the nuclear engine. Uh, and now we can see we're on a tilted orbit of Minmus, which is fine. Obviously, we didn't come from the equator, so we're going to be somewhat tilted if we're pointing 90 degrees. Uh, but that's going to put us on an in a tilted inclination around Kerbin if we're not careful. So I'm just playing around with the maneuver node gradually, trying to get our... Um, our projected orbit around Kerbin to be more or less in line with the Mun's orbit because the Mun is pretty much on an equatorial, uh, perfectly flat 
orbit around Kerbin. So it's a good thing to aim for if you're trying to get yourself on an equatorial Kerbin orbit, which is what we'll need to be doing if we want to be able to encounter the Kerbal Space Center, or at least encounter the Kerbal Space Center easily. You can totally land at the Kerbal Space Center for an inclined orbit. I've done it quite a few times. I even talked about this in my other SSTO tutorial. This is linked together quite nicely from earlier. I did a second kind of follow-up tutorial to the Minmus SSTO guide in which I flew to Juna, and on our return we were actually more or less on a 45 degree tilt uh, in terms of our, we our 45 degree tilted orbit around Kerbin and we managed to land at the Kerbal Space Center without even needing the rapiers for that re-entry so if you want to know if you want to get a bit more want some practice at landing kind of from a non-perfect orbit around Kerbin that's definitely a good video to check out if you need some help but I've just increased those I've just blown up the size of those Kerbal Engineer readouts so you can see more clearly what I'm doing here uh, to save fuel we're just going to do some aero brake passes to uh, force down our Kerbin apoapsis. We can't be too uh, overzealous with it because like I mentioned earlier that command pod is very very weak to re-entry heating effect so we're going to be doing quite a... Um, we might have been able to get away with something slightly lower in the atmosphere but we managed to get away with it with just two air brakes. So I'm watching the apoapsis height there. I want to get it to around... I usually aim for 75 kilometers um, just because that's kind of a nice safe distance over the alt, um, atmosphere line. If we went for bang on 70 um, it's not a great thing to aim for because obviously our burn to get ourselves into a circular orbit is not going to be instant so we're going to be doing quite a lot of that burn inside the atmosphere and it's just it's just I just prefer it it's just easier okay <laughs> and there we go stable orbit achieved so that was kind of the hard now no well now I guess now is the hard part really but we can just remove those Kerbal Engineer readouts again just so it's not obnoxiously filling up too much of the screen and I'm just dropping down the periapsis to about well, it's about 10,000 kilometers, really. 10,000 kilometers. 10,000 meters. I'm just going to be very gently tipping ourselves up. It took. This actually was the third attempt. The first two, I was very. Uh, I dropped my periapsis too low, and the whole thing exploded. Well, the front, the Mark One command pod at the front exploded, and we can't have that because that's the that's the thing that's controlling the SSTO. So the whole thing very quickly spiraled out of control when that happened. So skimming through the upper atmosphere, pointing ourselves up because we're actually undershooting the Kerbal Space Center slightly. And in fact, uh, with an orbital speed now of 1,200 meters per second, we're not going to be able to get back purely on gliding, unfortunately, which is something I like trying to do, but sadly couldn't do it in this case. But we have loads of fuel left. Wasn't too much of an issue. It's just over these mountains and we have uh, the air-breathing rapiers, which are pretty efficient uh, as far as engines go. They're the most inefficient when it comes to actual air-breathing engines when comparing them to the Whiplash Pound and uh, the Juno engine and the Leviathan. Leviathan, Goliath, the big the big turbojet. Getting a bit off topic here, but the rapiers are very efficient compared to chemical rockets. Beautiful shot of the uh, Kerbal's view inside the ship and there is the Kerbal Space Center looming ahead. Now I'm still going very fast, still flying faster than the speed of sound. Uh, twice the speed of sound actually when I said that. So we're going to be putting some pretty, pretty crazy G's getting ourselves leveled out, but luckily the Kerbals don't really have any effect. Um, when it comes, don't really suffer any adverse effects to extreme g-force, so it wasn't a problem. And there we go, so doing a nice sort of control tipping up, we can probably drop this down to normal speed for the touchdown itself, but just hop, skipping and jumping down the runway, using the brakes to slow ourselves down, a little bit of a wobble there, but other than that, not too much of an issue. And there we go, um, Mimus SSTOs, one of my, that's actually probably one of my favourite things to do, because Mimus is so nice to land on, it has those nice big flat areas, it's great for SSTOs, it's fun, I wholeheartedly encourage you to try a mission like this out for yourself if you haven't already. And other than that, that pretty much wraps this video up. On screen, top left is the uh, original video that this came from, so Laura plays Kerbal Space Program, top right is more Blunderbirds videos, and bottom right was specially selected by YouTube just for your viewing habits, so I hope you enjoy and have a good day.